Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking. I'm your host for this podcast. This is the Oakley Podcast, Trucking Business and Family. Once again, I appreciate everybody tuning in to the Oakley Podcast every week. We try to put you out some good content um, every Wednesday, bring in people that uh, will help make a difference in uh, you you being successful in your business. Um, and, and, you know, we try real hard to do that every week. It's not easy to find good content uh that we feel like is really good content for you, but we try to do it. I appreciate everybody subscribing, uh, watching us on YouTube, um, you know, listening to us when you're driving down the road, giving us feedback. Um, You know, we've, we've got a great social media platform that's going on and we get a lot of good uh, feedback from it that, uh, that it is good and it's doing good. And we need that from you guys. We need you to, uh, to share, uh, you know, if you want to share it with a friend, let them know, send them a link, uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, comment on us. We love to read the comments. Uh, and we try to reply to everybody uh, that sends us one for sure. So uh, we enjoy it, though. Uh, one thing we got going this week, um, I want to remind everybody about Mid-America Truck Show. Uh, that's March the 21st through the 23rd. We're going to have a great presence there. We're going to actually be... What we've done the last several years is we set up the studio there in the booth. We have like a 20 by 20 or 20 by 40 booth, and we we actually set it up and do some uh, do some recording. We record some episodes there, so we'd love for you to stop by there. You never know, put you on there. You know, you guys can sit down with me and we'll visit. But uh, March 21st through the 23rd, uh, Mid America Truck Show, Louisville, Kentucky. If you've never been there, bring your walking shoes um, because it's a lot of walking, but, man, it, it, is it worth it. You get to see a lot of stuff there that's not only, you know, to do with trucking but just about everything. Um, so come check us out, Mid-America Truck Show. A used semi-truck is a great way to kick off your career as an owner-operator on a budget, and buying from a reputable dealer like Aero Truck Sales ensures you're getting a reliable truck that fits your needs. They carry trucks from all the major manufacturers in the trucking industry and perform a thorough inspection of every truck on their lot to ensure safety and quality and give you confidence that you're getting a reliable truck that will last you for years at a price that you can afford. Being a longtime partner with Oakley Trucking and the Oakley Podcast, we trust them to provide our owner-operators with a truck that fits their needs and matches our qualifications. So whether you're a first-time owner-operator or just looking for a new-to-you rig, be sure to give Keith Wilson and Trey Visor a call at 573-216-6047 and let them know you heard it here on the Oakley Podcast. This week uh, episode, I have Hal Dolan with PrePass that's sitting down with me, and we're going to discuss... What's going on with prepass? You know the benefits of uh, of prepass to an owner operator uh, and how that helps them, and just some of the technology that they've got going on. We actually uh, interviewed Don Reeves, I believe was his name, uh, a year or two ago with prepass, and kind of gave us a you know the lowdown what was going on with it. I think it was episode one thirty seven. You can go back and check it out too to get some information. But this is this is new and updated stuff, and we always like to touch base with uh, with prepass once in a while to see what's going on with them and the benefits they have. And and how Dolan we've known uh, I've known that name for a long time uh, in the prepass world, and he's here with us to discuss it. How what's going on, man? You doing hey, okay? Hey, Jeremy. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to talk to your drivers. And I appreciate what they do for you guys and what they do for um, our economy. Yeah, well, I appreciate that too, Hal. Give us a little background on yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Hal Dolan. Uh, I am a regional sales director slash account manager for PrePass. Uh, I've been associated with PrePass for 24 years. In fact, I'm starting my 25th year. Um, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I have three children. They're all grown. Uh, and I travel the southeast calling on carriers like Oakley uh, Trucking and trying to sell our services to our uh, to those fleets that qualify for um, our time-saving technology. You know, PrePass has been around for a while, hasn't it, Hal? It has. Uh, I started, like I said, in 2000. And I think it started around 1996 out in California as a result of the way stations just being so clogged up that the government uh, – uh, chartered Lockheed Martin to find a way to get the good carriers out of the way station and bring those carriers that need to go through to continue to go through. So, yeah, it's been around for a while. What exactly – so from the outside looking in, you know, 
I mean, most of our listeners are truck drivers or associated with truck driving. They understand what prepass is, but kind of in layman's terms, tell us what prepass does. Okay. Prepass is a, uh, we started uh, when we first introduced prepass back in 1997, 1996. Uh, it was a way station bypassing service, electronic. And, and to date, we are the largest provider of that uh, e clearance technology. Uh, to the transportation industry. And basically what tra uh, prepass is, is a transponder, be it either you can have scale bypassing or you can have scales and tolls in one transponder, depending on what the driver or the fleet wants. And it is, it attaches to the inside of the cab. And as a driver goes down a, uh, an interstate uh, over the, and as he approaches a way station a mile away is a gantry that is, over the highway that's got a sensor up on top of it and as that fleet as that uh, truck passes underneath that uh, boom arch whatever you want to call it it picks up the signal that that device is emitting and uh, beams it back to the way station and electronically checks what's been checked manually over the years you know the if the the safety ratings and all that stuff and within a blink of an eye it gives the driver either a red light or a green light and a green light means he just keeps going on in the main line and a red light means he pulls in not for an inspection but just to go through uh just to keep the keep them honest so it's like i tell everybody just because you have it doesn't make you bulletproof you're still going to get a random percentage pull in based on your safety scores I guess it was, uh, like you said, prior to prepass, um, uh, the government was popping up these scale houses everywhere, and it was mandatory if you had a truck, right? You had to pull in there. Regardless, regardless, yeah. And they, and they, they just kept backing up. They just filled up, and it became, a, it became a danger, a hazard. And that's our core mission statement is to make our, our highways safer. So, you know, when a truck goes 60 miles an hour, idles down to get off the interstate, you know, and the motoring public is going 70, 75 miles an hour, that's a threat. And then when they approach back into the interstate, they have to build up the highway speeds and, you know, not always a smooth merge, as you well know, probably from uh -huh. your own experiences. So right. if we can keep those trucks out on the highways going at highway speeds, it just makes the flow of traffic a lot easier. It saves fuel. It saves time and aggravation. Is that something, I guess, how that you have to deal with, I mean, do you deal with the federal government or each uh, state? I mean, to, to be able to set that up and, and, you know, get a green light, a red light, um, yeah. bypass a, I mean, is that something you have to get permission from the government? Yeah, we to just, do? we, for instance, we, let's just take the state of Arkansas, for instance, we just can't march into the state of Arkansas and put our gear in the ground. Uh, we have to go through the, the state DOT, get approval, uh, and then the states to adopt a scoring system of which a carrier can bypass. And about 98% of the states that we are in have the same scoring system. Kentucky's a little bit more stringent, and as you can imagine, California is the most stringent uh, based on your ISS score, your inspection selection score. So I looked at yours, Oakley's, uh, based on your DOT 3259, your ISS uh -oh. score is a 33, which is outstanding. So oh, is what, it? Good. Yeah, what that means in driver's terms or in layman's terms or my terms <laughs> is that 95% of the time a driver is going to get a green light at a, at a pre-pass equipped way station. There's a, there's a random 5% pull-in rate that's done, and that's the best you can be in the, through the state's eyes. Is they, want, they want to look at 5% of our customer base on a random sure. basis just to keep them honest, you know? So, so each, each state has their own criteria? Yeah, to, that and, they set. Yeah, and most of the states are the same, with the exception of uh, California and Kentucky. And okay. they, you know, it, it's the state's prerogative on what they want to do. So, back when I first joined Jeremy uh, Prepass, it was either you were in Prepass or you were out. Okay. Now yeah. with the uh, scoring system the way it is, uh, the closer you are to a hundred, the hundred is as bad as you can be. The more percentage you're pulling is. It goes from five to ten percent to fifteen percent to twenty percent, and then once you get to ninety nine or a hundred, you've got to pull in regardless. Yeah. Okay. Which makes a difference that <clears throat> you know which company these truck drivers go with. Absolutely. It makes Absolutely. a big difference. Uh, Absolutely. Because 
probably more than anything, especially an owner operator, they know what it costs for them to stop that truck. You know, uh-huh. whereas a, a company fleet driver, eh, he may or may not, but that, that owner operator's paying for that vehicle he's driving. So if the wheels aren't turning, he's not making money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and, and I mean, you get with a bad company, well, all of a sudden you're getting pulled in every state. Yes. And you, you can't continue to drive and it affects your, I guess it affects everything. It affects the logbook. Hours of service. Your, uh, yeah, fuel mileage probably stopping yep. and going, wear and tear. I'm assuming, and and then just the chances of getting uh, CSA violations yeah. on your record, the driver's record, because yeah. the and not not to mention the the bannering that truck drivers probably give each other. You know, if you're running in a pack of four and three of them get to bypass and the one has to pull in, they're going to give that guy a lot of crap, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, why did you have to stop? Yeah. We didn't have to, you know? So yeah. There's a, I'm sure there's a lot of that going on out there as well. So. Yeah, I'm sure it is too. <laughs> yeah, we'll save you a parking place down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I can tell you, since 1997, when we first started uh, measuring all this, to date, we have provided over $1 billion well, that's with a B, successful bypasses in the continental United States. So that is wow. that is huge, you know? That is, yeah. That is huge. Yeah. And I, I'm sure the guys probably at the um, at the scales, the DOT officers, they probably love you, don't they? Yeah, yeah, because they're like everybody else. They're, they're short-staffed, and they don't have time to, you know, deal with every carrier. So let's get the good guys out of there and the guys that need to be coming through, then we, we can focus on them, you know? Yeah. So. What states um, are you not in? Uh, well, we're in 41. So. Uh, well, you about got them all. About got them all. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you right. I can't rattle off the nine states that we're not in, but uh, I can get that for you if it's. Uh, but. No, I knew. I was saying that, and I knew one of them was Georgia. Georgia, uh, yeah. It seemed that, like uh, we talked about that was the yeah. other day. Yeah, that's uh, you know Georgia. A uh, couple three years ago, decided they wanted to put their own system in, and it's not going the way they thought it was. So right. we're back in conversations with them to to some do some pilot at different locations there. So we are eagerly hoping that we can reestablish ourselves in the state of Georgia. Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't want it. I mean, yeah. I can't figure that out, but some states got their own deal, and I—that's I, probably hard for you guys to. Uh, I mean, I, you know, having to deal with each state uh, different ways and, and try to crack the code and, yeah. and get in there. Yeah, yeah, and but you know, uh, North Carolina tried to th- the same thing, and they have since said, you know, uh, private equity, private organizations are better than state governments. That's not what we do. You know, I think they yeah. bit off more than they could choose. So we're back in North Carolina as an example. So we're hoping that same uh, luck will follow us to the state of Georgia. Uh, I know uh, technology is coming a ways and, and uh, we were talking to Tommy, I believe it was not long ago on a conference call and he was talking about uh, the, I didn't quite understand it, but the mobile app. Mm-hmm. So it, because at some in some places or in some states you don't actually have a transponder or or a thing over the highway to there's not a brick and transpo- mortar yeah there's not a brick and mortar site there yeah explain that to us well okay uh, I'll try to make it as, as simple as I can uh, uh, a lot of states have gone to this technology called geofencing where they will, uh, let's say the state of Texas, for instance, Uh, I've never been down there, but I've heard that they've got these wide spots in the road. Okay. And enforcement will set up at different uh, wide spots throughout the month, throughout the year. And when they're set up in those areas, then they'll geofence it. And those trucks that have the mobile app will be picked up. And once they cross into that mobile or into that geofence, it'll give them a signal uh, on their tablet or their phone, wherever they've got the mobile app downloaded to, uh, to bypass or pull in. So on those mobile sites where those guys set up at a wide spot in the road, uh-huh. they're going to pull everybody in anyway, basically, or it, unless you have this app? Unless you have the technology on the mobile app, yeah. Uh, okay, that's what okay. I was wondering. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And 
And let me clarify what you said a while ago. You've never been to Texas? I've never or, seen the wide spot. I've never seen okay. how they do that. Now. I've been to Texas. I've been to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas, right? Uh, just making sure you've been to Texas. But what we are we are working with your provider, the GeoTab slash Transflow. Uh, I think yeah. I'll use that for yes, sir. your ELD provider. We are working with them, and we should have something hopefully by mid-year, third quarter, to where we can load the mobile app on your tablets in the cab of the driver. So what that would mean is the driver would get in the truck at the start of the day, log in, single sign on. It would, you know, awake, waken up that uh, prepass app and it runs in the background. And when a driver approaches a geofence site, it'll come up and give the driver a signal on his tablet. But it won't, uh, it, when you go through a regular brick and mortar one, it's just going to give it to you through the transponder. Through the transponder. So that's the okay. best of both worlds, as I was saying earlier. You, yeah, you got them both covered. Yeah. How many? I mean, how many of these are existing or happen in a month's time, or you know the the. the I think, I think we've got close to about a hundred sites right now, mobile sites, geofenced. In, in really the, in the in respective states, yeah. Okay, I didn't yeah. realize we had that much. So a driver can go out to prepass.com who's got uh, prepass in their truck. He can download the app uh, for no charge. I was going to ask you what's the best way, I mean, for a guy to sign up with prepass. Uh, you know, I know we go through, you know, our guys go through us. Yeah. Um, we're we're a client of prepass, and then we just charge it back to them. And we, we issue them the um, – transponder mm -hmm. uh we call it the big white one that does everything yeah. um yeah. that's the only one we offer sunday paper the sunday paper so, yeah that's it <laughs> uh so that they uh they have that and then we just charge it back to them but how what's uh somebody out there listening maybe has their uh, own authority or uh you know is yeah. a, they can go out to prepass.com or they can call 1-800-PREPASS which is 1-800-773-7277 and Ask for inside sales, and one of those uh, representatives will be glad to uh, collect the data, the application, and get them set up. So we don't charge for the initial device, so there's no setup fees, you know, and there's no installation fees. You know, you just peel off the back, stick it in the windshield, and you're ready to go. So yeah, pretty it's simple a pretty, deal. It's a pretty static piece of equipment. Yeah, and then it's just a monthly charge. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. E easy to use on. Yeah. If you don't have it, uh, you sure need it if you're traveling very much there's, there's, uh, through there's, scale for, houses. Yeah. For an individual owner-operator, there's no contracts. So, you know, if he decides that, hey, this is not what I want to do for a living, he takes it out, sends it back, and he's out of the program. You know, so it's not a 12-month gotcha clause there. You know? Oakley Trucking is a 100% owner-operator company. We specialize in hopper bottom, end dump, and pneumatic trailers. We provide the trailer free of charge, and you provide the truck. We have a large customer base that reaches the whole United States as well as parts of Canada. Our owner-operators live anywhere from Texas to North Carolina to Pennsylvania to Wisconsin and everywhere in between, and we get them home weekends. We take it seriously when you join Oakley Trucking because we need you to be successful. Oakley offers great benefits and competitive mileage pay, so you know that when your wheels are turning, you're generating money no matter if you're loaded or empty. We understand that you want to make a good living and that you make our living. We only take on independent contractors, and to be honest with you, we are very particular on who we lease on. You must have a good driving record, good work history, and clean, dependable truck. So if you're interested in Oakley Trucking or just want some more information, you can go to oakleytrucking.com, listen to our weekly podcast, The Oakley Podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. What about, I was talking about that transponder we use that does, it does tolls also. Talk about uh, paying for tolls. Uh, I tell you, we, we the toll world is in a complicated world. You know, it's ever-changing. <laughs> it's expensive. Um, but we have, we have tried to make it a little less complicated. Um, uh, that transponder, we do all of the major toll facilities, you know, be it easy pass, be it Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, California, anywhere, Florida, um, uh, Illinois, Ohio, that transponder will handle all of those states tolls. So mm. you get a little better toll rate paying electronically than you do with cash, just because there's no administrative efforts from the toll people to handle that money. You know, uh, 
the, the, the device is read at a toll plaza. We bill after the fact, and whatever the toll was is what we billed. You know, we don't mark tolls up. You know, if the toll was $20, that's what the driver or the fleet is going to get charged. Okay. We also handle violations. Should a, should a device not read or maybe the toll plaza, the, their reader's broken, whatever. If a driver gets a violation, he or she can send that into prepass. We will dispute that violation on that driver's behalf. And any monies we recover, we credit back to the driver 100%. So we keep none of that money. Okay. Well, the you know the tow world, like you said, is complicated for sure. And I can just imagine if I was a truck driver, um, you know, I wouldn't want to stop at every place and pay a tow. You know, right. just just send me the bill, and I, so I can keep moving. Yeah. Well, uh, and just, and you know, keeping up with those receipts. You know. Yeah. I mean. The, the receipts now are electronic once you use the prepass. So the driver doesn't have to turn. You know, if he turns in a trip pack at the end of every week or at the first of every week, you know, there's always a little Susie somewhere saying, I don't have this receipt for this toll. You know, well, all that goes away because on your bill are your receipts. I noticed I've gone to uh, over to Tulsa uh, a bunch over the last seven, eight years, and I'd always have to stop at the toll booth and pay. Yep. You know buck 25 225 whatever it was uh well this last time i went i noticed that uh, i didn't have to do that so it's it's i guess they got rid of the they got rid of the the stations and the people taking the money and it just you went on through i'm expecting a bill sometime yeah, soon you're getting, but it's high speed yeah it's high speed but i was in a rental car so i don't know exactly how they're gonna get it to me but uh They'll find I you. I kept going. <laughs> yeah, I'm They'll sure they find will. you. Yeah. yeah, the rental companies, I've rent a lot of vehicles myself, and they're usually about two or three weeks away. You know, you you, you pay yeah. your – when you turn your car in, you think that's it, and about three weeks later you get a toll bill, you know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. 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 They'll locate me. But that's, that's an example of them moving to this, I guess, um, technology and not yeah. having people there taking the money. Yeah, I know. I know in Illinois for sure, up around the Chicago area, they've got these high-speed lanes that you know you don't have to stop, but they've got these readers over the highway that picks that signal up and bills you accordingly, you know, mm -hmm. based on your axle configuration. I got uh, something I didn't put on your list that I sent to you. What I was looking on your website, and what is the Prepass Safety Alliance? They've got their own website. Yeah, well, we we are now part of the Prepass. Safety Alliance, and that is Prepass is a nonprofit organization, uh, and we are composed of uh, a board of directors that are 50% industry board members and 50% government board members. So, when decisions are made, policies are made, each you know we don't take advantage of industry, and the industry doesn't take advantage of government. So. Uh, Prepass Safety Alliance is the governing body, I guess, for lack of a better term, of, of Prepass. I didn't realize it was a nonprofit. Yeah, the three. It's a what is it? Three PC or three P or something like that. Huh. Yeah. That was interesting. I learn something yeah. every time I talk to yep. y'all. What? Um, so what's the uh, what's the future looking like uh, for Prepass? Well, uh, we we are we are continuing to grow. We've got over eight hundred thousand commercial vehicles running a combination of our services, be it tolls only, scales only, or scales and tolls. Uh, we are going to continue to improve our service, both from a billing standpoint, from a toll validation standpoint. You know, if a driver gets a, a violation, we're going to be able to prove exactly where he was at the time of day using GPS. Uh, data uh, to uh, validate that toll or invalidate that toll, okay? So uh, we're going to continue to work with the different uh, TSP providers to get an integration into their system with our uh, mobile apps. And uh, this is the year of the customer for prepass. We are really going to focus on our customers and make sure we are doing things that they see beneficial, that they see a return uh, on their investment with prepass. That's good. Are most of your customers, how are they like us, you know, trucking companies, or do you have a lot of small trucking companies? We have, we have a lot of small trucking. Of course, we've got the mega carriers as well, but 
Uh, I, I would, I would probably venture to say our average fleet size, when you take it all in consideration, is probably 20 to 25 trucks. Really, you know, I mean, you've got, you know, to me personally, the individual owner operator is just as important as that 500 truck fleet because you know, he, he's, he needs it just like they do, and uh, yeah. we've got. I think 92 of the top 100 carriers own prepass, and oh, yeah. uh, we've got a substantial amount of owner operators through different organizations, uh, and you know OIDA, Nastic, and those kind of people. Uh, but you know this this product is very configurable both for fleet drivers and owner operators. I'm assuming uh, a, a uh, company like OIDA, they probably love y'all, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a nice recruiting bullet. You know, we're going to pay you well. We're going to give you a nice truck. We're going to get you home. We're going to give you a pre-pass. You know, it's it's just mm -hmm. another bullet to add to your recruiting efforts. It does. Uh, it does help in recruiting and, and more so probably in retention. Mm -hmm. uh, once you get, you know, people used to it and you got a good safety rating and, you, you know, you're not getting pulled in. I mean, it's just a hassle when you – Right. When you get uh, pulled in, uh, even though they have to do some, but you know you can tell a difference too. Um, just when, like, we'll have we we have a good safety rating now, but have not always had it in the past. We've had, you know, one category would go over the threshold, and when it does, you can tell. You know, yeah. uh, guys start getting pulled in a little bit more, and and they'll even uh, ask, "Hey, are we?" Are we over the – how's our safety rating? I'm getting pulled in everywhere, right. you know. It's like, well, we've got one category that's over the threshold, so they're checking us out a little bit closer, so make sure right. you're on your game. Right, uh, right. Makes you know, I've, I've, like I said, I've been here quite a while, and I've had a lot of stories. But one story that's really stuck in my mind over the years is the driver uh, had a pre-pass in his old truck. The company bought him a new truck but he would not move into that new truck until they put a pre-pass in it. So he said, I'll stay in my old truck until you get a device in this new one. Then I'll take possession of it and start driving it. So <laughs> That's how that, important it was. That is me. how important it is. And if you don't think it's important, you let that device go inactive for some reason for a period of time, they're going to be calling their fleet manager saying, what's wrong with my pre-pass? It's not working. Yep. So, yep. you know, that just validates that it is uh, – it's a nice to have, but it's also a got to have, you know? Yeah. Once you have it, I mean, you, you don't want to let it go. I mean, it's just something. Yeah. And I'm sure you have drivers that probably ask the questions during interviews. Do you have pre-pass, you know? Oh, yeah. And it's nice to say, yes, we do. <laughs> oh, it is. Super nice. They, they are, they're all interested in pre-pass. I think yeah. it's something. Y'all have done a great job of getting it out there for sure and, and making it a good, uh, a positive product for trucking companies, and that's – well, that's always you. good. Thank yeah. you. We we support the we support the state of trucking associations. We're very involved with the Arkansas Trucking Association. Uh, we're an endorsed product for those guys, among other states. Uh, so, you know, we've got the support of the state trucking associations as well. So now I talked just a minute ago about Oakley going to Matt's and come see us. What are you guys doing there? We will have a we will have a booth. Uh, we've been I've been like I said twenty five years. I've been 25 years less the two years they didn't have it because of covid but uh, uh we will be there from thursday to saturday at saturday evening so if you have drivers coming through we'll stop by your booth as well and uh yep. stay hang out a little while if you got some drivers coming through we'll be glad to answer any questions so but, well yeah. that's what i was going to ask is that a uh how is that something where they can sign up there Absolutely. or Oh, they can. They can yeah. sign up and yeah. everything with yeah. you there. Yeah, that's the main purpose, main reason you're going in. Yeah, if a driver if a driver wants to prepass, uh, they'll need to bring their uh, copy of their IFTA and maybe a copy of their registration card at the time, and we'll get we'll take the application from them. We'll process it and then we'll ship the device to them. Okay, so easy enough. So we we we've had good success for that because, uh, you know, you'd be surprised how many drivers that, that are there that. You know, they walk by our booth and they say, I love that green light. And they yeah. just keep walking. <laughs> you know? you Got to love the green light. Got to love the green light. Yes, sir. Well, what's in the future for Hal Dolan? What's going on? Where you, You're in Knoxville, Tennessee? I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm a huge Vol fan. Uh, I hope to go to the Final uh, Four this year. And 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm a UT grad, a UT alum, so uh, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. You know, I'm 64 years old. God, God willing, I got great health, and I'm going to yeah. continue to work till, you know, somebody says you you don't need to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't need you anymore, Hal. Yeah, uh, you don't want to yeah. hear that. But no, I, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy uh, developing relationships with customers, and you know, uh, try to treat people the way I want to be treated. You know. Well, you must be doing something right because uh, they wouldn't let you hang around there for 25 years if I'd you like weren't doing something that. right. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Thank that's you. a milestone. I mean, that's a great milestone to hit 25 years. At yeah, the same time. I, and I've worked, I've worked in transportation for about uh, 41 years. I was with Averett uh, Express for 15 years before joining Prepass. So I've been on oh. the carrier side as well. So it's it's – I know in calling on people from the carrier side, they appreciate somebody that's worked in their shoes, you know, yes. because they have a lot of people that call on them that have no clue what they do, you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it helps to know a little bit about the transportation world if you're going to try to sell something to them. Yep, yep. So Oakley Oakley has – Oakley and your drivers have been a loyal supporter of Prepass, and we certainly appreciate that and look for many years to come with you guys. Yeah, no, I appreciate that too, Hal. I appreciate you getting on uh, on the Oakley podcast with yeah. me and help educating our owner operators and and their families on what's all going on with prepass and just how it, how it helps a driver. And that's the thing we try to do here at Oakley, and, and especially on this podcast, is you know give them stuff that helps them. Uh, that's yeah. what we want to do. So, well, if you've got a driver that's got a question that you can't answer, please give them my contact information. I'll be more than happy to tell them uh, the truth. <laughs> first and foremost um and uh be glad to work with them in any way we can all right hal appreciate you talking to me today and and really appreciate all your good information we'll see you at matt's and uh be safe and if you need anything call okay okay yeah hey thanks everybody for listening to the oakley podcast uh really appreciate y'all tuning in every week and if you got questions about prepass just like hal said give me a call send me a message uh, message us on social media and I'll get you his contact information and we'll get your question answered for sure. Once again, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Thanks.